Hi, and welcome to Spring Grove Nursery's video for September. I'm Jamie Thomas. And I'm Becky Thomas. We've got a lot of great things going on here this fall at the nursery. First of all, we have a holding yard sale on all of our above ground trees from our spring dig. You can click on our availability list to see an exact uh, listing of what we've got above ground. Jamie's been busy shipping and delivering already a lot of those trees. We also have our field direct specials again this fall on new trees that we can dig from the field. Uh, what have you been digging so far? Uh, I've been digging evergreens for about two weeks now and in about two more weeks I'll be able to dig deciduous trees. It'll be perfect timing for it. Great. We've also been out in the field finding a lot of new varieties that we haven't had before that are available for us to dig now. Um, some of those, and we'll scan through some pictures here too that you can see, Sun Valley Red Maple, that's a real nice red maple variety. Uh, Pacific Sunset Maple, that's a great tree. That's a cross between an Acer Truncatum and an Acer Platinoides. Um, that has a real nice fall color. A couple different Catalpa varieties, the Northern Catalpa and the Purple Catalpa. Uh, Golden Glory, Cornelian Cherry Dogwood, Common and Vernal Witch Hazel. Uh, Autumn Gold Ginkgo, Kentucky Coffee Tree, Moraine Sweet Gum, Dawn Redwood, Bloodgood, London Plain Tree, and Quaking Aspen. Um, we're really excited to have some of these new varieties available, and we're standing in front of a few of them right now. Um, behind us, this is Pagoda Dogwood, and this is one that we've had before, uh, but we just now finally have it available in some bigger sizes. Pagoda Dogwood is a great tree. It gets around maybe 20, 25 foot tall, it has a nice layered branching look to it with white flowers in the spring. Um, kind of bluish black fruits later in the fall. Um, into the summer and actually I was just reading that there's 98 different species of birds that like the fruit from the pagoda dogwood. So that's kind of a nice feature of that plant. And then this is the vernal witch hazel. Um, witch hazels are great plants. They have uh, kind of neat bloom times when other things aren't going on out in the field. The vernal witch hazel blooms really early in the spring, uh, kind of depending on the, the winter, February into March with a yellow flower. And the blooms are also kind of fragrant. They say they smell kind of like gingerbread. Um, we've got these in four foot clumps and six foot clumps. And then in the Pagoda Dogwood, we have them up to six and eight foot clumps as well. Uh, what we'd like to feature now are, is some of our pictures and video actually from our summer vacation. Uh, we got back right before the kids started school in August, we went out to Oregon and we visited uh, two of our liner suppliers uh, great nurseries and we, sh we shot some really good footage while we were there. We also got to, um, what else, we got to see the Redwoods. Uh, we went on a uh, rafting trip with the kids, they had a great time. Yeah, that was a blast. We went on the Rogue River in, in Southern Oregon and did some whitewater rafting and it was a lot of fun. So here we're going to show you a couple video clips from Carlton Plants with Dick Bocci was our tour there and with Nancy Buley at J. Frank Schmidt. here at Carlton Plants in Dayton, Oregon. Carlton is one of our liner suppliers and we like to stop by and visit them at least once a year, see what uh, new trees are coming on, what our liners are going to look like for next season. Um, this is Dick Bocci and he's been with Carlton Plants for quite a while. About 40 years. 40 years. And as we were out driving along, I thought an interesting spot to stop might be in front of their crab apples. Um, they've been growing them on sprout-free understock for quite a while now. And we've switched all of our crab apple production over to their liners. So, if Dick, if you could talk a little bit about sprout-free and, you know, what brought that on and a little bit about how that works. Crab apples are, have always been, it's been a problem with crab apples of suckering on the rootstocks. It's, a very, it's a very labor intensive and when it goes in the landscape, if it suckers, it can overtake the variety itself. So all nurserymen have been trying to find a rootstock that actually will keep the suckering down. And in this particular field, you're looking at trees that are grown on a rootstock we call sprout free, uh, indicating that the tree pretty much will have no sprouts on it when it is a mature tree. And it, it will save hours of labor, both on the, our end and on our customer's end. So we're pretty excited about it. We think it's going to help the whole industry as far as the crab apple industry goes. Yeah, I'm really excited to have these available. Um, probably, we're hoping we'll have some ready next year. We've been growing them for a little bit now. Uh, and I think that's really going to be a popular thing for all of our customers. Thanks for giving us a tour of Carlton. And we're always glad to stop by. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, we're 
here today at J. Frank Schmidt Nursery near Portland, Oregon, and I'm with Nancy Buley, who is the Director of Communications. Um, Nancy's been so gracious to show us around today. We've been touring the nursery, and we found out that today they were doing some um, softwood cuttings, which is really interesting. This is where the tree process starts here on the end in Portland, and then we get the tree several years down the road. So Nancy's going to explain a little bit about what they're doing here. Well, late summer, mid to late summer is when we really start making trees. Um, every morning for just a month or so, our workers go out to our cutting orchards and they, they harvest branches, thousands and thousands of branches. And they take these branches and make cuttings from them. Can you hold that? Yep. So what they do is they take this one branch and make several cuttings out of it. They take, they make, always make sure they have a bud at the bottom and a leaf at the top. So they'll cut this into five or six sections. And so these look like elms. What kind of, what variety of elms are these that are doing today? Well, we grow about 15 or 16 different varieties of elms, and this happens to be Princeton elm. Okay. Which is one of the new disease-resistant elms. Now we're out here in the greenhouse where they're sticking the softwood cuttings. Would you like to explain again, sure. Nancy, what sure. they're doing? Okay, so all these branches were cut this morning. You saw the long branches in mm -hmm. the greenhouse, and they were cutting them down to this size. Well, then they, they've been dipped in hormone, and then the next thing they do is see how they're cutting, or see how they're, they're making holes. This is a pattern. Mm -hmm. They're poking these down to the, the bottom of the little nail holes, and then just one after another, about a thousand an hour, I think, and putting these in. And each of these will root just in several, in just a couple weeks, there'll be little white roots here. They'll stay in here through December, or November, December, and they'll be all rooted out, and then they'll come in here with pitchforks and, and dig these all by hand. And, and take them out, they'll go out Lift to the them, and then they will prune the roots very, very strenuously. They'll, they'll prune them down to just about nothing, and then, then they'll be transplanted out into the fields, outdoor beds. And then they will grow there for a year, and then they'll be dug again with the tractor diggers, and then they'll be lined out in the fields, uh, one foot to two feet apart, and grown maybe for another three years before you get it. So it's like a five-year process before you get your bare root tree that you'll plant these about mm -hmm. five springs from now. That, that's fascinating. <laughs> well, let's go out to the field and take a look at uh, some of the trees growing out in the field. It takes a long time. Yeah, this is great. Thank yeah. you. We hope you enjoyed watching that video footage. It's really interesting to go out to the nurseries in Oregon where we get our trees from and see how the process works on that end. And, and we really enjoyed visiting with them out there. So we'll leave you with this video for September. We're in front of a beautiful uh, redbud clump here. These are some really nice redbud specimens that we have in either multi-stem or single stem form. And the Eastern redbud was the Society of Municipal Arborists uh, Tree of the Year for 2010. So we've got nice ones that we can dig um, this fall or again in next spring. Thanks for watching uh, our September video and hope to see you in October.